Hello and welcome to Asian Tech Forum. In this Meraki Zero to Hero series, we are towards the end of our segment. And finally, I'm going to onboard a few environmental sensors. The first one is MT Environmental Sensor. And what is MT Environmental Sensor? It provides real-time indoor air quality monitoring to promote smart spaces and create safe environment. It can detect presence of chemical debris, extreme temperature, temperature, humidity, and noise. If air quality decreases for any reason, MT can notify you immediately as part of the alerting or automate the building HVAC system to increase ventilation. And you can also automate things by using APIs. Let's go to data sheet and understand about Meraki MT14 a little bit more. So this, this is MT14 Cloud Manage Indoor Air Quality Sensor data sheet. And we know what is it. It can measure temperature, humidity, air quality, noise, etc. You can also use uh, MQTT and other APIs. And you can see never miss out on event. That means you have the alerting capability. That means you can get real time alert via email, SMS, or push notification because monitoring uh, without alerting is uh, no good. And this is a cloud first architecture. So everything, all the data shows up into your Meraki dashboard. Now MT14 specification, it can measure temperature, humidity. Please make a note of total volatile organic compound. That is a detailed analysis of air quality. And this feature is only available if you power up your MT14 using uh, USB-C. And I'll show you the different power option in a moment. Wireless capability, it uses Bluetooth low energy, that is 2.4 gigahertz ISM band, Bluetooth band. Data logging, data logging is temperature every two minutes, humidity every two minutes, PM is every five minutes, and so on. T walk, it is every 90 seconds. That's the uh, organic compound. Ambient noise every five minutes. So different uh, metrics get reported at different frequency, and data reporting to Gateway, it's every 20 minutes. And onboard data storage, we have some onboard data storage also, five days of data storage. It can hold locally. It is secure using Bluetooth low energy, energy message encrypted and authenticated using Cisco Trust Anchor. Power up specification, we have four AA batteries. You can use uh, to power up MT14 using AA batteries or you can use USB-C power adapter because it has the USB-C port available. Um, on, on the device itself. And that's what you would like to use when you are using, when you want to monitor TVOC. Battery life is pretty good and power rating is domestic power rating. Some ordinary information here. All right, so now you know what is MT14. Let's go ahead, unbox our MT14. Once we unbox it, we are going to plug it uh, with any USB C power supply and claim it within Meraki net, uh, dashboard. All right, let's do the unboxing. As you can see, this is Meraki MT14. Once you open that, you can see we have MT14 sensor available. This is where you have AA batteries. And I'm pleasantly surprised that we have nice uh, Energize Max batteries already packaged. All you need to do pull this plastic strap so that the batteries can make a contact and push it back. Now this device can be powered on using battery and it is already doing that. So the USB C power, as you can see, we have the USB C power option available here, and I'm going to connect this along with battery so that we can get TVOC information. So you can use USB-C to power up your device as well. You have AA options. What else we have? So let's park it here. What else we have in the box? So we have a metal plate, just like Meraki, uh, all the Meraki gears so that you can do a wall mount or a ceiling mount and here you can see we have the metal plate i'm assuming we'll have the screws as well 
and this is securely packaged or securely packaged you have the wall mount screws here as you can see if you want to do a wall mount i'm planning to keep it at my desk so i'm going to put this screws back however there is a one interesting thing i would like to show you that is this piece this looks like a coin battery but it is not exactly a coin battery it is a magnet and it has a two side tape on it so you can stick your um this to to this metal plate and then you can put this environmental sensor to a metallic uh, face plate or any kind of like a cabinet whatever is the metal element you have in your, in your network like a data center rack so this is really cool i really like this feature and probably I'm, i'll end up using the metallic one to hang my air quality all right let me show you the final thing in case you are uh, wondering how to put this face plate on do we need any additional hardware the answer is no what you can do you can look at this alignment um, this groove and align it here let me show you real close just put it like this and here you can see we have a button press press button kind of thing just gently press this and you can see this is attached so no additional hardware you need and if you are planning to use magnet it is ready to go you can just simply hang it now to any metal surface with any uh whatever kind of orientation you want this is the properly a, a uh, probably a good orientation because you will have the lead flashing here and now in case you want to remove this face plate to uh, replace the batteries that is pretty easy to do press this button here and yep a little bit of struggle but you know what to do you need to press this button and just remove this all right i'm going to put it back because i'm planning to use it like this Let's go and onboard this to Meraki dashboard. All right, so this is our inventory page, and with last four digit of serial number, I could find that Meraki MT14, and I have claimed it and added it to the to our network CF uh, CVF53 APX network. Right now, as you can see, there is no environmental sensor tab available here because this is booting up and i just have powered it up using usb c and this thing is trying <clears throat> trying to come up once it comes comes up it will talk to mr device and from mr the data will show up in meraki dashboard so let's wait for that all right it's been some time we have powered on our device and right now it's sitting next to meraki ap but still we don't see it online zero online one offline so let's go and see uh, if there is any additional setting required wireless ap which is kind of like acting as a gateway within wireless you can see we have configure ssid etc as related to wireless but we have something related to ble or iot iot radio settings let's go ahead and click that Within that, we have Bluetooth, electronic shelf levels, and MQTT. These are like two different protocol. We are focused on Bluetooth. Here you can see warning all Bluetooth features, scanning, beckoning, scanning API. They are mutually exclusive. Enabling either one of these features would prevent other from working. All right, what do why we want? We want scanning. Turn this on to have your BLE enabled Meraki access point track Bluetooth devices in your network. Because right now, if you go to wireless and you go to Bluetooth client, we are expecting to see sensors as a Bluetooth client. But since sensor is not online, there is no Bluetooth client. So let's go ahead and try enabling scanning feature for this radio. I'm going to say scanning on and only scanning on. Go ahead and save this. Saved. And now we are going to go to 
Mira aquí. All right, so uh, our sensor was taking quite a bit long to come up and did that make me wonder what's wrong? So here is some quick troubleshooting steps what you can do. So from switch, we know it is connected to switch port 12 and I have enabled another column, CDP and LLDP. So make sure um, we have CDP and LLDP support enabled for MR or your access point. And here you can see the access point is using CDP and LLDP and requesting power 14.16 watt, which is A22.3AF or generation one, maximum 15 watt it can re uh, request. Then let's go to the wireless one and make sure that you have the IoT radio enabled, the scanning enabled, which we have done that anyways. Let me scroll that a little bit. Here you can see we have IoT radio assignment as a BLE. Let's go to the power. Here you can see we are using A22.3AF, which is 15 watt maximum. It happened, it uh, kind of like let me thinking if that is a problem. So let me show some troubleshooting document. Here, this document talk about low power mode, and it says that some Meraki MR access point required PoE plus that is up to 25 watt or 80, 802.8380 power level. Otherwise, it's running in low power mode. And once you run in low power mode, you may not have all the uh, features working for you so that may be the case um here as you can see mr access point our ap must use medical switches support and so that could be one case but i happen to find another document let me show you this one um, here you can see This is a troubleshooting document and it also talks about the same thing. However, I didn't find anywhere which says MR36 needs 802.3 AT or 30 watt of power. So maybe other sensors need that, but there is no proof that uh, MR30 access point also need 30 uh, watt. So what I happen to do, I happen to just reboot my. Um, reboot my ap since we enabled the radio support iot radio support in software but we didn't reboot the radio um wireless access point so once i reboot the wireless access point let me show you what happened now if i go to wireless you can see it is still running PO, poe uh, 822.3 af which is 15 watt maximum and now if i go to sensor sensors you can see we have one empty online so looks like mr36 can still function with sensors at low power mode or at 15 watt however since we enable the iot radio in software a reboot was needed and that's what happened once i rebooted that you can see we have our sensor online. Here you can see we have data coming in. Indoor qu air quality is fair. This is the temperature, humidity, and TVOC. These are things are calibrating. But right now it is connected via cell batteries. So may we may not see TVOC straight away. Let's look at a few other things. With respect to sensor you can see we have very good rssi coming in because it's literally sitting next to the ap and contacted nine minutes ago we have battery usb connected let me show you this is connected to my machine um, that's why it shows usb connected pretty accurate and location we don't have any location services enabled and you can assign a camera but we don't have any camera yet. 
then go to setting here you can see pm 2.5 high sampling mode require persistent power for functionality that is the usb c power and will disable temperature and humidity reading your sensor will sample pm 2.5 every one second so this is high sampling mode but it disable temperature and humidity I, I i don't have any use case for that but in case you are in that kind of setting where you need ambient noise and tvoc pretty frequently go ahead toggle this and uh, then you will see that as a sensor data perfect so we have sensor within our network let's look at a few things here like alert automation and mqtt first let's look at alert because once you are monitoring you want to make sure that um, you can get alerts also when something happened so here you can see sensor status alert default applied to all sensor but there is zero recipient subscribed and then you can have suggested alert profile default potential vape detection alert so this is actually based on your sensor meraki is giving you a suggestion that what kind of ready-made alert profile you can use or you can create your own alert profile uh, and assign sensor like you can say test you select a schedule for the alert profile select no schedule to keep alert profile active all time obviously you would like to keep it active all time so i don't want any schedule but if it is a kind of uh, on and off um, atmosphere where things are working weekdays but there is nothing in weekend then obviously you can create a schedule and then you can assign a sensor to that but we will stick to the default profile instead i'm going to come here and say edit and within edit i'm going to say mt14 a sense alert condition as we saw mt battery has this cable for mt with batteries has disconnected or reconnected that's one and battery goes below 10 percent so i want to make sure my sensor is up and running all the time then you can select notification you can do email based notification you can put us sms or you can use your webhook base and notification for other sensors they like typical sensors like mt12 we have specific alert that water cable is disconnected and for mt20 battery is removed and all those things and this is the setting for all the sensor so let's go ahead and put an email notification gmail.com and save changes then uh, i would like to show you the automation part we may not do anything with the automation but here you can see we can create some api based automation let's not quit and get into that because i'm not prepared for, for that and mqtt of course we do a lot of things in sgn tech forum re related to iot so if you have your mqtt broker you can select this data to your mqtt broker and and maybe use node red to visualize things this is all i wanted to show you or meraki sensors i know we ran into some issues but that was for good um, luckily it was not a problem with the power profile since we are using latest access point mr36 but keep in mind if you are using something legacy make sure you are running in a uh, high power mode otherwise your sensors may not work with that i'll see you in next video please do like share and subscribe thank you